Good evening, everyone. I would like to call forward the August 6, 2020 meeting of the Harris County Board of Education. I want to have a motion at this time that we approve the uh, agenda as presented. Uh, Ms. Oliver, second. Mr. Parker, uh, any discussion? All in favor, respond by raising your hand or saying yes. Yay. Motion carries. That brings to item C that the Harris County Board of Education review the attached meeting minutes for the board meetings held in July. Those are in the package. Trust me, we'll take a look at those. Review if you have any edits, we can get those to your couch and uh, you will see that we get those. Um, <clears throat> That will then bring us to item D, one of the Harris County Board of Education. This is a curriculum department update from Dr. Dick. Dr. Dick. Good evening. Good evening. So the first thing I'd like to talk about real quick are the what our numbers are looking like for virtual versus in person. So I think the last time we talked, we were somewhere around 1,000. We've been getting a large number of requests to switch over to virtual. So right now we're up to 1,357, which now our actual percentage is a little bit over 20, 25% inching our way up to the total population. And before we were about 30% of those who were submitting, now we're actually 25% of the total population, a little bit higher than that. Uh, pretty well balanced, pretty much 100 per grade level. You know, we have distributed. We have, we did open up, and it's hard to remember a lot of what we've done since we last talked. Uh, we did open up another kindergarten, so we now have five kindergarten virtual teachers. We have four virtual teachers for first grade, second grade, third grade, and fourth grade. We have eight virtual teachers in fifth and sixth grade. I believe eight, one special ed teacher in seventh and eighth grade, and we're at 12 or 13 virtual teachers for high school. Any questions on the numbers, virtual versus in person? Well, I did we get a copy of that from Mr. Dr. Denny? We did not. I can send a copy. If, if you don't mind, it was just hard for me to hear. Thank you. I have a feeling before tomorrow we're going to be up to 1400, 1450. Because it's, I don't know what the sentiment was, but we're getting one. We're getting a lot of late registrations because they're completing all of our have never been in our system before. So one of the big things is we're growing. And I think I've said before, you know, I think we were expecting 830 or 840 in middle school, we're up to 900. So by the time we get into that middle school next year, it is going to be full. And that's, you know, we're seeing that. Consistently across all the schools, it's not just one place growing, it's all there's a lot of building there. There is, and it's, I mean, it's even the you know, single single family where they're you know, it's not a non bad sickness right now, too. Scott, do you have a I just want to make sure I was 13 was a bunch of numbers, that's right? Correct. Uh, one of the things. For the most part, and this is what we're going to start running into as we get more and more. So when you have a nice number like around 100 per K4, that equals roughly you know, 25 students per class, and you can't really go much higher than that. So we're getting to the point where we have one spot, two spots, three spots left before we have to say, okay, we have to wait until we get 10 to 15 more, 10 to 15 more students. Because at that point, we have to pull an in-person teacher to virtual and make that change. So right now we're in that situation with third grade, we actually have three students waiting. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're gonna we're gonna try to accommodate. We're gonna make sure our teachers have the Google classrooms out there and that they have they do have you know daily activities and they're gonna make contact with those students if you step in person to try to accommodate that need. What kind of stuff do you have to do about that? Yeah, so that's where if, if this if the 
coronavirus thing gets really hairy and then too much comes up because yes, we're going to have to reach certain those kids where we get teach from, which is why we don't want to do that lightly. But on the flip side, if things go well, wearing a mask and kids start to trickle back. Well, at some point, we're not going to have enough for virtual students saying kindergarten justifying the kindergarten. But when that teacher goes back to her school, all her kids right now aren't from that school. So now they're going to have to redistribute that. Did you see the big film on you for Paul from Town High School? Yes, we've all seen it. <laughs> I, I think Mr. Couch has really instilled in our administrators. We want to make sure we do not see that on the first day of school, making sure that. If it's nice outside, we want to have to change class. We're not going to have that next week. We hope. Any other questions on virtual and in person numbers? Can I ask a question about the teacher and the master? Yes. So, in the, the high schools, I know we've got, say, 12 or 13. Or, so, like, is each kid taking their four, four classes for their? I mean, how, how is that being distributed for life? Um, like other uh, pathways and that kind of stuff. How, how are kids going through that through the virtual side? So the first thing is every year the middle school and high school go for the and it's called a my academic planner, and they plan out the four the four years the students are going to be in high school. The first thing is you don't ever take four academic courses at one time because that's that's a big course load, especially if you're on the milestones. So typically they do two core and two electives. So we are making sure that we're able to hit all the core, yeah, all core classes, hit the electives. I don't want to say we're struggling with, that's a little bit more difficult to, to manage online. So we do have CTA courses that are available, like Introduction to Law, Public Safety and Corrections, Intro to Health Science. So we do have those options. Now, it wasn't necessarily one for one. So if I was scheduled for basic maintenance and auto repair, that's not available online. So we either have to, this is where, you know, John comes over there moving things around. What's that going to look like next semester? And of course, if we're still doing virtual next semester, what does that do to our course load next year? Because if we have students that want to do that, you know, they're going to have to wait a full year if we're still out of school. So I can't give you a great definitive answer on that because it's it really determined by that how long we're on the and that's where I figured we would have the biggest moving parts aspect of it would be the biggest challenge with the pathway stuff you know, and the CTA stuff, not, not the core stuff, but all the other variation of classes that we offer in the high school. Because, I mean, you might have two in this class, two in this one. I mean, how can you do, how can you do hands on in construction or shop or any of that kind of stuff that for these kids that are doing virtual versus an in person aspect of it? So, I know it's not, man. man no. I feel like it's going to be let's 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 hope for the goodness that you know we'll get back to in person quicker than later, sooner than later. But you know, the longer this progresses, the further behind or the bigger the the, the problem is going to be. I mean, just because it's going to be a snowball. You know, we're taking the kids that need certain courses and sort of just keep pushing them back until we can do it. And the rosters get really large. They're doing a really good job in playing school with that. I had a talk with Mr. Brown yesterday. We talked about it being the manager of the facility and, and trying to help some of the CTA. I mean, some of them have been you know, to be done online and sure to talk with others. So they've requested that we look at it. And I'm going to go ahead and look at it. I'm going to look at it. You know, we had the lady do the talk uh, with two sections, 49% of the um, computer programming. We're looking at bringing her back. So we've got enough kids going into that area that can be done online. And then I can you know, pick up some of the stuff to give them more options. And then look at the general kind of things. But it's not perfect. I mean, yeah, there's, I mean, as we go through this, that's the one constant thing is there's no answer for everything. You've got to come up with answers for a lot of these little things that are popping up. And our, our group, I think, has been really good at being flexible and really really innovative in the things that we're trying to do because you know typically when you come up with a schedule, it's pretty easy to come up with that schedule and how you're you're essentially serving two high schools, two master schedules, one virtual and one in person. And that is a very tall task as I found out trying to think about the high school. I'm sure it's 
Uh, well, with that, just talking about, you know, I'm sort of dividing up what we're doing correctly in the phase. You know, phase one is essentially getting, getting a plan in place and implementing. So phase one is really setting up the school year for you've got the virtual, you've got your, and your in-person students. So getting ready for that phase one, uh, we've been, you know, we've had our virtual teacher orientation for K-4. Uh, we have been talking with 7th grade and working on actually discussion. Two trainings to the community, edging and getting them out to train themselves, getting them access to courses and getting them um, access to you know the scopes and sequences that they're going to be working with in virtual and in person to make sure that we're on the same phase. Uh, we've been talking with administrators about making sure that when the school gets up and running, phase one is everyone's got to have that good classroom and has to get their materials in there because we're preparing in phase one for. I mean, what may happen in two or three weeks? And if that happens, we've got to make sure that we're prepared before that happens. So we have higher expectations and better outcomes than we did last year. And of course, you know, that phase two is, you know, we get into school, we get the kids, you know, safety and habits doing their things. But now once we get into school, making sure every day that we're here, that we're getting into the routines that if we do get out of school, that it's not a big deal because they practice at 17. Open in their Chromebook, log in the Chromebook, immediately go to your Google Classroom, and that Google Classroom is your playlist of materials that, if it says Monday's the playlist, you have five things, you know, go one, two, three, four, five, and how to get there, and access the materials and complete your assignments. And if we can do that, we can have a much, much better, or much higher expectation of what we would get for our students compared to what we had at the end of the last month. One of the things that we put out, like, and I handed this to you a little late, is our curriculum expectations and objectives. So for curriculum, we've never really had a document that sort of outlines everything we do and everything we're trying to do. And this is by no means comprehensive, but this was, we're trying to get everything out there so teachers know what the expectation is. And if you get a chance, just read through here, but it sort of outlines, you know, what programs are we using? So we talked about graduate reading last year. Well, that's on here because we're still expecting it. It's no different. Yeah, we're going to have to be six feet apart. We're going to have to have our dividers and make sure we're not, you know, too close as we're doing this. But that's still an expectation. Uh, and again, it outlines all the things that we've been focusing on and been implementing. Still, whether you're in person or you're virtual, you have those same expectations. But I did want you to see that uh, we've been telling our teachers, don't get overwhelmed by it. It's just to you know, even for the curriculum department, as we started building this, we were forgetting things we had to focus on. And this is really, you know, if you want to know what you're doing in virtual from day four, look at this document that shows you what you're what you're focusing on. And then going along with this, we also have our resource guide. So as you know, we talked about textbooks, our uh, math and ELA were up for last year, but of course, we're going through the standards process where they're redoing the standards. Uh, our science and social studies, due to budgetary constraints, we're going to do this year. So, we had to provide a good set of foundational materials for our teachers. And this really outlines that. So, K 12, we have what's called CKLA, which is for knowledge and language arts. This is an open source. Uh, textbook that was created by teachers solely to one to get online, but two to if you go out and you look at a lot of reviews of the textbooks that are out there, out there, for example, our journeys program. If you look at the ratings by Everport, our current textbooks were rated not so well. CKLA is actually one of the highest rated in the country because it's written by teachers and follows certain standards and it integrates a lot of materials. Also on here, you have your your, your, your math. And again, that's in regards to your high school. All these resources, if you've ever seen a textbook adoption when they come and set it down, it's like three big boxes and materials. Well, these, when you click on CKLA for kindergarten, you get those three boxes for all these. And that's the, the resources that we're offering. And we have that same thing for ELA math, science, and social studies. And it can be quite overwhelming because sometimes it's easier when it comes up that big box in front of you and you can sort of come through it quickly figure out what you need. 
Uh, a, little bit, a little bit harder on mine because you've got you know, four or five digit files and you have to open them up and scroll through. But those resources are there. Well, Will you speak towards the camera because I have a hard time figuring it out? I will. I'm going to go like this. Oh, <laughs> That's Carl. This is perfect. <laughs> oh, let's see. I uh, just want to give you another update. We, there has the, you know, the state that's filed for a waiver for ELC and EOG testing. There has not been any information received on that. So at this point, we are, you know, according to the state, we haven't been granted a waiver. So we are still testing. Not sure what the results of that will be once we'll get started. And then the last thing I just want to talk about the some of the training we've been doing. So while while the curriculum department, we're, we're doing a lot of things to get the teachers prepared for the start of school. Some of the things that we have been having training is outsourced. So as you know, as you know, seventh, seventh grade through 12th grade is a new program. So we've had two trainings uh, for pre plan one prior to pre plan where we take teachers to start them. But we had a two hour training, I think it was yesterday during pre-planning and then once we get in for about a week or two, then we're going to have another follow-up training with the teachers to make sure that they've got the program down and they're doing things in an optimal way. We're also looking at implementing a, a program called AMIRA. The pilot, we're piloting it and we're going to see how it goes. AMIRA is an artificial intelligence reading program. So the first big thing that, that it has that we haven't had has a dyslexia screen which the state's going to start requiring that dyslexia screen, if not next year, the year after, I think it's next year. So the students get on, essentially without teacher intervention, they click on and take a test. The test pops up a screen, they do a short bit of reading. It pops up letters, they say letter sounds. They say letter names, and they go through this four-minute assessment. From that information, we get their oral reading fluency, we get information about phonemic awareness, uh, we'll get there are two more measures and I can remember them off the top of my head. But the key is without teacher intervention in four minutes, we're going to get data that typically takes us one to two days of testing only to get. Now, once we're done with that assessment, the neat thing about Amira is it will automatically place them in the reading level. So the next time they go in, they say, let's practice. So now they go in and let's practice. It pops up a passage uh, to that, that student's level. They start reading it. And if they make a mistake, the machine detects that, talks to them about the word they made a mistake on, helps them sound out the word, defines the word, does some things to help mediate. And of course, it's just like practicing with the, your teacher. The only difference is you practice on your computer. And they say you want up to 45 minutes a week but it tracks, every time you do that, it tracks the data on you. So in theory, when we get that, when we are halfway through the year, we could have up to you know, 50 data points for every student and how they read. But on top of that, they're getting that daily feedback if they use the program daily, that teachers just can't read individually with every student every day, so they're getting that daily feedback. So we did have our kickoff training basically overview of what the program is and what it looks like for our teachers. And then once we get our students in, we'll come back and, and review that. And then the last thing that we're doing new this year that we haven't done is called the Hegarty from the Awareness Program. Uh, essentially, you get a book, you get a really scripted book that details do this, this, this for 10 to 15 minutes every day, dealing with one of the awareness. It's one of the five pillars of reading. It's probably one of the things that we've been missing most in our schools for K-1. So we have paid for online PD for them, essentially where they're going to almost like a Google Classroom, four to five lessons on Hagerty PD, how to actually implement it in their classroom, and what, what should be the result at the end. Because ultimately, if we don't pick up those phonemic awareness skills, uh, addition, deletion, subtraction, manipulation, and there's one more that I can actually remember. If you don't have those skills, Ultimately, you're not ready to read and be a successful reader. But that is all I have for tonight. Do you have any questions for me? I did, Dr. Denny. Yes. I'm sorry. When you were talking about the pathways and some of the courses not being available, do you have an idea of what specific classes are not going to be available virtually? Have you already identified those? 
At the high school, I know one of them is Chorus, and Ms. Pope is one of our virtual teachers. Uh, the middle school, forgive me for not knowing, the middle school has told me a couple times, and I just, right now I can tell you what it is that they're not offering. I do know their connections courses that they are going to offer online. One of them is, I believe it's called Something Wellness. So it's your, it's your health course, but it's got a different name and that's movie. And then they're also offering... And and I didn't want to put you on the spot. I'll I'll, okay. I'll send an email and maybe if you could just follow up with those court, I'd appreciate it. Thank okay. you. How are the the teacher training going with the Google Chrome books and all that kind of stuff? I mean, I don't know who that follows on there, but we got it there. You said the teacher training, the like the, the parent training, the parent training. I guess we're doing for the uh, uh, parent training. university training. We've had, and I can't, I can't say the specific. Okay, we can work there. Okay, good. So what I will say, I've seen my team doing them, and I know they've had some high participation in some areas, not so high in some other areas. But from what I've seen, they seem to be going over well with decent participation rates. Any other questions, comments? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That will bring us to item D2 to the Harris County Board of Education. We have a situation. The resources are falling up in this car lot. We need it. We need a So we're really finding better ways to do things. So 
Um, this moon ocean is great. We put the ocean photos just so you can see the great new faces. I know you enjoy meeting them, and even though you're not able to meet them, she's prepared these um, sheets. This will be on our website. I think it's there now. And we'll be emailing this to all of the faculties. But we are just, I can't, I can't tell you how proud I am of this um, group. I know as they come through, I always run them down to see Mr. Couch. You know, look, look what we have. This great new team of teachers. They are excited and really positive. So those small groups really helped us to connect with them and personalize the learning. So that was great. Um, listed for you a couple of topics, of course, we um, welcome and expectations for our district. Um, code of ethics, um, introducing them, walking them through the compliance director modules. That's online training. I think it's about 13 modules they'll complete between now and October. Um, they got the contracts. So we have a welcome swag bags with Harris County t shirts. I mean, you can't be in Harris County without some black and gold and personalized lanyards and ID bags. And that was great. Um, program training, I have to give all the, the praise and the kudos to Dr. Nitty's team with Ms. Miley and Ms. Harmon and Mr. Childers. They just divided and conquered and did a great, great job. Um, I think by the time I wanted to them to do the flip three videos to you at the end of the day, but they were so worn out. They were exhausted. And uh, I thought I'd bring you their photos instead, but they completed a second day, a half day at their school with their principal and a lot of their mentors. So they are off to a great start. And I, I visited the schools and I see a lot of their classrooms and they're ready as they can be during this year. So I think this, this, this group of 2020 is going to be a remarkable one. Next session, next section, just to review with you, as you know, we um, have been preparing quite a bit. I think the most majority of our time right now is really making sure we have a safe and healthy workplace. And if we have a safe and healthy workplace, we have a safe and healthy school so our kids can come in to learn. And just a few, um, I didn't, I want to bring a few things, but not everything. But um, as of just a few minutes ago, we have 800 employees that have committed, they've committed to their daily health agreement. They, they understand and they agree to not report work sick. They understand and agree that they check their temperature every morning before coming to work. They agree and understand that if they are in close contact with a COVID positive individual, they know they must quarantine for 14 days. They know and they understand if they are COVID positive, they are to share that with us, their employer, and that is to protect their health, their coworkers' health, the health of our students, and this is our community. So we have 800 of those on file. Um, as of just a few minutes ago, we're continuing to verify. Um, and if individuals have questions or concerns, there's a box where they can request a conference and human resources. We are reaching out with phone calls, virtual meetings, to make sure people are confident and sure about what we expect. Um, next, um, I just just for your information, there's just a, a couple handouts there. A few things you can go to our website, the Human Resources uh, webpage. We have a code resources section. A lot of this more is in that webpage. On that webpage, we also have a COVID response Google Drive that's shared with all the administration and the assistant principals. So they have that. So this is just a really quick, this guidance on COVID. It's just a really basic, simple, you know, do you have symptoms, what do you do? No, I do not, and then yes or no. A really simple flow chart. And then behind that, you will see um, what we call the COVID-19 employee process map. And this is something that um, has been reviewed with administration, I know, Ms. Baker's going to share you with a similar map that's for students. So people have a visual because unless you've been studying and reading this every day since March, it look, it really can be complex and difficult. Yes. Until you go through it, you go through it, and you go through it. So sometimes hearing it and seeing it and going through a visual. So this is the employee process map. This has been reviewed with the administration. 
and it's going to be continue to be reviewed Ms. Baker and I have a meeting with school based health teams and she'll talk about that. So the biggest thing I wanted our administrators to know, our employees to know, is if, should they have an employee that's ill, they just need to call human resources and we will take it from there. So that's all that front switch play. And we will be in touch with that employee. Um, they will complete their own um, report and that is online. We also have hard copies for those who um, do, do not have access to computers and Google forms and links. Once they complete that report and provide the information we need, um, they will get a phone call from human resources to say, hey, are you okay? Um, how are you doing? And then they will confirm what the employee has completed on the form. And from that point, we will um, they, they check their report first. Then we start calculating their days of leave based on what they reported. And then they follow up with a phone call, confirm all of that, let them know what their start date and their end date, whether it's quarantine or isolation. Then we follow that up in writing with an email to them because when you're hearing that news, you can be kind of overwhelmed. With, oh, no, I'm not quarantine. I'm going to do meeting questions. So everything that's said in the phone call, either Brad or Pam, they put that on paper and they email them start, end dates. And it also has all of the medical things they should watch and be aware of. And their supervisor is also notified. We also include the required forms if they need emergency paid leave at the same time. So one hour of leave. No, they get 80 hours uh, through the through the act of the government. Yeah, so yeah. 80 hours of pain leave provided. It does not hurt. It does It does not touch the what they built up. That first that's for employees that have been employed at least 30 days. For at least 30 days, and that's the provision. So just a little bit um, for you to We don't have a sick leave like one day a week. We did. Um, I'll just let you know one person did inquire what if one of our brand new employees with no sick leave, you know, has to quarantine. Um, my recommendation would be something I take to the superintendent is we would, we would pay for a new employee who would be leave without pay and get one check. I would recommend to the superintendent we work with that employee and we do something to spread that out because you know we don't we don't want that to impact them negatively and financially then one big hit. So that would be my recommendation and hopefully we won't we won't have that but if we do I think we need to be you know flexible and do something out of the ordinary for, for a case like that. Um, also um take a look here you got your process map. This, if you looked at your official emails, this is a return to work guide. This went out in May to our extended year employees that are 240 or they were doing summer school or they were coaching. This um, is sponsored by SHRM, and that's a, a great benefit of being a member of SHRM and being with the HR professionals. And they allowed us to customize that to our district. Again, I think visuals and really simple bullet points help people understand expectations and what we're providing for them. And I think we just need to continue to communicate with them. Um, um, speaking of that, I've gone to several faculty forums, whether it be virtual or face-to-face -face distance, just to talk to our employees. Number one is just say, you know, it's going to be okay. Um, we know you're nervous. We want you to feel all right. But should this happen, we're going to take care of you. We're going to support you. And, um, just if you have any questions, let us know. So I'm trying to do that face to face. As I said, we have partnered um, with support services and Ms. Baker and her team, also with the Harris County Health Department. Next on the list is we're pre preparing for substitute teachers um, return to work because when the substitutes left in March, it's a very different world than it was February, March. So Ms. Munoz, we've been reaching out through Radio we've got direct access, we've been messaging them. Um, sending in many of the same materials. Um, we sent out a message just yesterday and already 40 have committed to the daily health insurance. However, they do understand they will be required for face coverings again with temperature, temperature checks on site. Um, so to make sure they have that information. So we're trying to educate them before they come on board so they know what to expect. And COVID-19 positive and close contact support and leave tracking. We will see another 
There's just a couple of sample forms when I was talking about how we communicate with our employees. When we have the conversation, we send them the conversation in writing as well. So they have a record of that. That's a couple of drafts we use. And then last you will see a daily COVID case tracker. And it might take a moment. You may look at it and understand. This is today's daily report. This is a cumulative report on March till today of our active and expired cases of individuals affected by COVID. If you would like me to explain it, I will. Just left to right. Okay. Nope, you've got it. CO and CS. Okay, central office, street side. The best thing you know is my district. So, the first central office, street side. And then, um, and that's right there, that one has to do with ESY, our summer program there at Creekside. Food <laughs> Nutrition, Harris County High School, Mulberry Creek, and we have Park, and we have Transportation, EOC, and then you've got a grand total. And we have one school that's not reported yet, but we, we will put that one in there. So you've got close contact active, that means right now today, that's a Fifth case that we're monitoring, close contact expired. That means their their 14 day quarantine is over. Then you've got exposed. That would be expired. And this is an early um, exposed means they were in the vicinity of. They did not meet the criteria for close contact. And then positive active. You can see the counts and where those are. And then positive expired. You can see where those are. Those are across across the board. So that is a small version of a tracker that I'm not going to go through, but about 39 actions um, required to this point. So we're doing, um, we found a really great system to, to make sure we are keeping our employees briefed and keeping them knowing where they are, where they can track where people are affected so that way in the future we can as school starts and we're coordinating with support services um, tracking our employees and tracking our students um, to make sure we keep our, our district healthy um, as far as COVID um, I called each and every employee that is, that is suffering with COVID um, just yesterday just kind of a one-to-one -one hour to do some have no symptoms some are getting better and some are it's a struggle, but um, I just felt like they needed more than a report in the form to give them some time. But um, they, were, they all will come back to work and they all tell you to wash your hands and wear your mask. Um, last but not least, um, online contracts will be issued August 28th. We do have substitute teachers, uh, new recruits of that group will be coming um, for a socially distanced training brand new to substitute teaching on August 11th. And that's just a quick update. Any questions or comments for Sean? That follow the side to come back? Uh, I just want to say thank you. This is not the first time that we've uh, expressed only you can follow the rest of the team. I appreciate you. But, um, there's a lot of work uh, being done to um, ensure that the safety of our staff uh, that is sweet beginning of our year uh, happens. And so thank you to you and your team for all the work that you've done currently doing and I must completely will be for a while. So, uh, we'll be there is, for a while. Yes, yes, you will. Like I said, Brad and Van are well. really taking on um, a lot of technology this and um, thank you for providing that support. Really good we know how much that support would be needed at a time like this. Thank you for the Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that will bring us again to item D3. The Harris County Board of Education will listen to a support services department update from the paper. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. 
So um, we have been at this point very, very busy with a lot of planning and a lot of preparations. Um, I'm going to start with Mr. Green's question about the parent immersion sessions because we want to make sure that our parents are really equipped with using the Google Home books and the Google Access for these students and using virtual learning that they know how to help them. So, so far, we offered session one, which was offered in July, July I'm sorry, and we had over 500 parents to participate. And as Dr. Dean said, there were some schools that were higher in numbers than others, but the thing is, a parent could miss one school and join on another school. So that, those sessions went well. We are getting ready to start tomorrow with our next set. So they start tomorrow and then they roll themselves out according like we did session one. Um, my next topic is to just give you an overview of the summer feeding program. I gave you the numbers for June, which were 35,994 that we served. And for July, we served 34,596. So we had a total of 70,950 that were served for our summer feeding program. It is very awesome. And speaking of feeding, I know that there have been a lot of questions from some parents, and you have gotten some of those questions about how we're going to serve parents and students on virtual learning. We have, we have come up with a virtual learning plan that has been um, discussed thoroughly with school administrators. We've gone through and tweaked it to make sure that it's user friendly for our parents, and so we have a plan. So, our virtual learning plan would be parents will. Um, have to pre-order their meals through a Google form that will come directly to us and then we'll get the numbers to the school. When they pre-order the, their meals, um, they pick their meals up one day a week. So we'll do multiple meals on one day a week, which is going to be Monday. They're going to have the option of either choosing one meal for breakfast or one meal for lunch or two meals for breakfast or five meals, whatever they decide. They have that option. And the school will prepare those meals based upon what the parents put on those first forms. Now, we're going to have to play it a little bit by ear starting Monday because we know Friday is when we want the form to be submitted to us each Friday by 8 o'clock. But since school starts Monday, that probably is not going to be possible. So we're going to make sure that we communicate with parents. We want to get Mrs. Smiley tomorrow to send out um, uh, an the campus message telling parents on virtual learning how they can their meals. And we'll just work with them so they'll know. Yeah, I'm sorry, sir. Because that can be a target to do that because we know who they are. Right. Right. I hope it can. Dr. Dan, that can be a target to do that, right? This is most people. You're say that would make it talk long and confuse those that are in class, but it can be a target to do that just those are virtual. Yeah, we tag all of our data cards tag virtual students so we can filter specifically yeah. after the students. And then our other saving point is that all the virtual teachers have been given that plan. They're going to put that plan in their Google Classroom so parents can have it along with the board. Now, you can finish your presentation now. Okay, well, that's all I have about the virtual meal. Good, then I'll ask my question. So uh, that's a great plan, and that will work once people get accustomed to it. Um, but what if it doesn't work? What if are we going to be prepared for teachers that, excuse me, that parents that show up on Tuesday? Uh, I know I can tell them yesterday, I can't get my notes for the week today. Until we get in the flow, there's going to be some some bumps and bruises over compared to that. We are prepared for that because it's probably going to look like that next week. Of course. Maybe every week. Yeah. So we're going to have to continuously communicate that. But we are looking forward to some of those bumps and we get those iron out. So hopefully, within the next two or three weeks, everybody will know when they can pick up their meal at each of their schools. And also, an important thing I forgot to say is that if a parent has a child at multiple schools, the parent will be able to choose what school they want to pick up their meals versus going to all three or two schools. Both schools. You're ready to go? So where wherever they're registered, wherever their student is, that's where their meal would be. But if they have multiple children, they like I want to, I'm just gonna use Mountain Hill Creekside in the high school, they could choose Mountain Hill, which is the community that they live in, and pick it all up right there. That's correct. So how are you coordinating doing that? Is there gonna be a certain area that they come to to get that? Or or I'm, I'm sure you're gonna explain all that to them, but I mean, are we making sure that we're taking all the precautions for our employees and our students that are in class, that the people that are coming, are they coming into the building? How are they, what's that process going to be? They're not going to be exiting their cars. Okay. They're going to go into the bus lane, 
and we'll have our school nutrition manager or worker out at the bus lane, and the parent will pull up. My child's name is Shania Baker, my lunch number is this, and these are the meals that I ordered. And then the parent will leave. They'll pop their trunk, they'll drop it in, and they'll leave. So they will not enter their buildings or exit their cars to get their meals. Yeah. That's good for them and good for us. Yes. Yeah. And we have our standard out times. Elementary schools, we're going to have a pickup time between 8.30 and 9.30 in the mornings. And Northern High School, along with Creekside, will be 9 to 10. Because we didn't want to get into that window of the buses coming in the afternoon. Because, of course, our middle school and high school will be um, way more um, attractive than the others. But we want to make sure that we don't interfere with the buses when they come. So that's why we have this time. So then we'll start before lunches so that the school nutrition staff can feed the students or any students. Are we going to need to surge, um, like bring in additional employees like earlier in the day to compensate for the extra preparation of additional meals and things like that? No, we're not. And the reason we're not is because they're preparing the meals at the same time. So it would be no different if the meals were served in the school. It's just that on Mondays, we're going to have a higher number, but we already know that number on Friday. So they'll be prepared for that on Mondays. Awesome. Right, are we speaking about school and the free and reduced or anybody? Anyone. When they make their lunch order, they're going to have to indicate that their meals are free. So will they be charged at that time when they order? I'm sorry? Will they be charged at that time when they order? If they are reduced or paid, yes. It's on the form, so it does indicate that. So we actually work at a time. They'll be doing that for the school book, right? Yes, do my school bus. That's what we encourage. So we hope a lot of parents will actually pay for their lunches through my school bus and there's no transfer of some money. So they would, they would just do it like they normally would and put the money into the account and it would just drop all down and okay. Yes. All right. That, that was all the questions I, I had. Uh, so if we follow up to one, uh, you'll have to answer all of these. When Mr. Ray was mentioning about the staffing, so I understand your explanation then of the food prep, uh, not needing additional staff. I appreciate that. But obviously, if someone's going to be running into cars, if 40 cars in this designated place, that's going to require additional staff. How do you intend to um, manage that while painting your breakfast line or preparation? I'm assuming there's, there's a some paint that will be a great place for me. Well, what we've done is we, had, we got all the schools breakfast certain times and all the schools lunch certain times. So that's how we came up with the time that we have for the other press. When we get those numbers, the staff is already preparing food that's going to be back in grab and go setting anyway because we know the schools have chosen to eat lunch in a different area versus our cafeteria. So food will be grab and go. So it'll be the same process. Okay. So there will be people that will have food. Also, remember, if you've got a thousand students in the school, they're running on one. Your staff is out to do best work right now. Yeah, I don't think that makes sense. In my mind, I, 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 would, I could not see the same five people working the line versus delivering breakfast to the rooms versus delivering to a car. I was trying to figure out how to manage that. The cafeteria staff won't be delivering. The cafeteria staff won't be delivering to the different areas of the school. Okay. The school personnel will actually come in and get that piece taken out. So that's what hurt us at all in that time. But like Mr. Scott said, we already have that number sure. of staff that and that school, sure. that school's population is still the same number of meals that we can serve in our students. That's on Mondays would be more. Sure. Because we're getting multiple meals in Monday. So it's grabbing those meals. This way, they're going to be the, I guess, for ease of the distribution to the same five meals for lunch, same five meals for breakfast. I mean, so not preparing five different meals for the course of the week. It's the crustable apple carrots, that kind of stuff for, for five days. It's going to look like it did similar in the summer when our summer feeding, not summer feeding, our COVID 19 closure. When we had multiple meals in one day, we had just a variety. But they will be meals that you can take and warm up later if you need to. So it won't just be the same thing. So they won't just get off peanut butter and jelly or all ham sandwiches or hamburgers, maybe pizza in there or something that you can warm up later. As a hot meal. Now, there are other items, maybe something standard like apple. So we have a special cost about lunch. Do they get the cost runs or the lunch That's up to each school where we have a lot of It's up to the building principal. But we have advised them to do. Just to make sure that they have an area with kids and social distance as late as possible. So, 
Now, in elementary school, what some schools have decided that some of them go here and do that. Other schools, the kids may go up like high school and middle school, may go up and get a The quick time they go to the middle school. Speaker, I had another question. If we, and we're probably going to run into this, if we have students that are not at their normal area during the week, say they're staying with an aunt or an uncle or grandparent who's at a different school, not say they're zoned from Mountain Hill and that's where they normally go to school, but they're staying with a grandparent that lives in High Mountain. Would it be possible to have their lunches or, or their meals sourced through Park Elementary? Yes, when the parent completes that form every Friday, they will indicate where they want to put the food up on the house. Thank you. You're welcome. So, what about, and you may have what about kids that may be, um, there will be some, I promise you, especially for older kids that are going to be home by themselves because parents are working but don't have transportation to come and get the meals. I mean, does that make sense? I mean, like, you know, my mom and dad are at work on Monday, Monday morning. My pickup time is 10 o'clock, and I'm a 14 year old child with no transportation. We'll do what we did in the summer. We'll tag team it out there for the social services department. I'll go out, the children will go out. Just like saying, we'll take them, we'll get them in food. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Sam. Okay, um, my next topic is in front of you, the blue student behavior code of conduct. So those are um, actually in the schools, so the school chapter of Congress and Pass House, that's our updated version. I just wanted to have a copy of it so that you would know. Not much has changed other than the policies that you have already approved for us. Everything else is pretty much the same, except for in the inside cover, we do have a statement in there that's in our student protocol for staying healthy, and that's just telling parents what we expect for them to make sure our students stay healthy when it comes to COVID-19 and other non-COVID regulations. Okay, the last thing I have, we also have this. Ms. Carl I spoke to the employee student, I'm sorry, employee process map. This is a student process map for COVID 19 and other illnesses. And we tried to make this user friendly as well. It has three um, areas of flow chart, and the top tells you which area deals with. So, whatever it is happening with COVID 19, this is what our school based health team, which is consisting of our school nurse, our school counselor, and our school data clerk, because all those people deal with some kind of way calling home and tracking students' attendance. So, these people will be responsible for helping us with these different areas on this student process now. We've gone over this in great detail a couple of times with the school administrators. We're meeting tomorrow with all the school based health team members and school administrators so that everybody knows what the language is, so that it's simple, so that they know what to do if something happens and it's not a panic mode. We will follow the same process except for we don't have the HR side of it having to tell what those students are quarantined that will be our side. And Mrs. Curry Williams, who is our case manager, will be the person on the district side that tracks the cases. We have a form that's created that each school will get. And they'll complete that if they have situations that reflect this map. And at the end of the day, we'll look at that and then we'll know what our numbers are for that day for our students. So it correlates with the important side. And I think that's all that I have. Unless anybody has any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now bring us item D4. That the year's Council of Education is to a facility and technology update. Good evening. Good evening. First thing I'm going to start with is uh, the COVID 19 supplies. The little distributor is small enough. As far as I apologize that this is a printed copy, I will send you one by email uh, tomorrow. Okay. We'll take it here right now. Great. Thank you. Um, so, what you have is the spreadsheet here of all the COVID 19 supplies that we have um, for here over, over the top. And you've got the schools down uh, the side, the left side there, and then you see the number of items that each school um, has been allotted. 
Um, down there at the bottom, then you have a total of a lot of to the school. Subtract that from the number that I have received, and that leaves us some on hand. So you'll see in some of those items, we still have some in reserve um, in case we need those. So that's a comprehensive picture of all the supplies we've um, procured for COVID-19. Any questions? And what about when you be using labs? Uh, well, this shows this shows right here uh, how many masks were taken in each school in each category. So the schools had their allotments of masks. Uh, so how would you determine that you're going? Are you going to automatically use the students, or are we going to wait for somebody to request? We are recommending that parents provide a mask for their students, um, and we did that before we got any of these supplies because we really didn't know exactly how much we were going to get. So we are asking the parents to provide a, a mask for their child each day, but we have plenty of masks to issue students. What we don't want to get into is we're, we're issuing new masks to students every day. Um, because some of these some of these masks, most of our masks that we have are washable and reusable. So uh, we are emphasizing to the principals, the teachers, and the staff, we've got what we need. We're very thankful for the things that we have and what we've got, but we've got to conserve these resources uh, because we don't know how long we're going to need to uh, be sustained with these items. Yes, sir. Um, I'm not hand sanitizer. We didn't obtain any of those on the FDA recall this No, no, I checked it. That's a very good thing. Chad they grew the they grew the right line, and then we got another. Uh, we had 1,300 gallons from Chattabrucci. They did a really good job. And then we got another 756 gallons from the Department of Education that I wasn't expecting um, last week. And uh, we, are, we are in good shape with the answer. Any other questions on that? Okay, as far as building checks, um, I went around to all the uh, buildings this week, uh, several times actually, and have been looking at classrooms and signage and um, cleaning, uh, maintenance and those kind of things. The classrooms are looking very good. Uh, the, the staff at the schools have done a great job getting all the necessary furniture out of the classrooms. It was a lot to move, but with the teachers and ABM provides extra day custodians this week and the maintenance guys, I moved some tables myself. Um, we got them, and the classrooms are looking very good, and we're getting them distanced as, as much as we can. Uh, the, yes, sir. Um, so, and, and I know it's, it's uh, a different across the district, but I think I heard you say that you are, they're doing a really good job of distancing the students as much as they can. Um, you feel, I mean, with cleaning out rooms and separating, you feel comfortable that, that the teachers then will also have a teaching bubble where they can. Yes, the, the, one thing you'll notice when you go into most of these classrooms, and I, I didn't go into every single classroom, but one thing you'll notice is that six foot bubble um, that, the teachers, that the teachers are in. And then you'll notice a, a good increase between the desks. What I mean as best we can is there may not be exactly six feet or, or that 36 square feet that each student would require, uh, but with plenty of masks with the desk partitions that you'll see over there in the column. Um, each student has a desk partition. Uh, where social distancing is not uh, possible at six feet, we've got those other mitigation. The partitions on the far Yes, sir. The, the partitions have been delivered to the schools and um, they are making use of them. Where did we put all of the excess Items that came out of those classrooms. Roll the way down. Okay. <laughs> Some of those. Well, personal items. Personal items on part of the teachers were taken home. Um, some of the items were discarded. Um, we did have to get all of the desktop. Most of the desktop computers are now out of the classrooms because we're going to have one on the phone book. And then tables and chairs, we stored those wherever we possibly could. Um, some. Some. Uh, some schools, you know, had more storage than others. Um, a few items, um, they, they put them wherever they could. Um, portables, uh, every empty space. 
make those little, I saw the roadway dump for a park and it was packed. Dr. McDonald can have your presentation. This is not um, coach related, it is start of the school year uh, I'm sure we should pick up and ask the same question. I thought we get that out of the way here. Yeah, how's our air conditioning? <laughs> I, I was getting to that. <laughs> not next, but not next, but it was the next uh, oh, second. The one that you're getting far. Um, okay, so we'll let me jump right to the HVAC because um, we are in good shape with the safety signs for COVID 19. You would notice a lot of the safety signs, especially at the front door, um, social distancing marks throughout the schools, uh, as in hallways as, as needed, reminders to wash hands, reminders of the uh, COVID 19 symptoms, and so forth. HVAC. We've done complete hand uh, of preventive maintenance of all the air conditioners in the district. Um, you know, we've got the new ones at the high school gym. We've got the new one at the uh, park gym. Um, that was then completed. And um, we actually also replaced, remember a couple of years ago when we replaced some of those fittings at park? Yes. Uh, and then they kind of had a, a problem with them. Yes. Uh, we got two wings at park completely refit with them proper ones this summer. Um, we ran out of time, but we've still got um, another set to go, but they've already been tested, so those are still um, fine. Until we can get a time to replace them all again, we've got the fittings on hand to replace those as they go out, if we have some more. Does this seem to be like, this is an ongoing problem? Yeah, not once we get these new fittings in, it won't be an ongoing problem. What happens is the fittings, the fittings will um, leak, and when a compressor gets low on Freon, it has to work overtime to, to keep that compressed, and the compressor will burn up prematurely. So that's the problem. But, yeah. but we've got copper fittings in there now, not the aluminum fittings. And then the few aluminum fittings we still have, we'll replace those uh, as we need to. But we are in great shape with HVAC right now. All the year. Yes, um, um, the air is working on all buses and all air conditioner systems have been treated on the buses as well as the interior of the buses um, so that it's got the antimicrobial qualities we need. It's residual, it lasts for an extended period of time. Therefore, we can use the um, air conditioners when we start running the buses. Yeah. Okay, moving to transportation. You're right on, Mr. Jim. <laughs> um, all of our bus routes, uh, we had our, our bus driver safety meeting um, this Monday and went over all of the safety requirements and all of the things that they needed to know uh, for the start of the year. Uh, all of the drivers have been issued their bus. The bus routes have all been confirmed. Bus assignments, as we've the ones that we've got have all been uh, confirmed and sent to parents uh, for the children's buses. Uh, bus arrival times and protocols at each school have uh, bus arrivals in the morning and departure and arrival and departure in the afternoon have all been confirmed with the principals. And those plans have been talked through and rehearsed. Um, and then we're going to have a transportation message go out to parents. I was hoping to get that out tonight, but I wanted Rachel Crumlin to review it, so it'll probably go out tomorrow. Um, just what to do, what to look for on the first day of school. Uh, be aware of the buses, be aware of the more traffic uh, that we're going to have, um, those kind of things. Speaking of traffic, we do have uh, Georgia DOT has major construction going on down here south of Hamilton and also over on Highway 219. So we're making the parents aware of that, that if those are in your route, you can expect the rest. We have, con uh, we have uh, contacted the DOT and made them aware of our release times and arrival times in the mornings. And they're like, we'll do everything we can to help you. But it's right. unlikely that they're going to stop work um, for us. So uh, parents arriving in school as car riders can expect the rest. We, we might get some buses caught up in those you know, one lane switches that they do as well. So, um, 
just to give you an idea about DLT, the, the Fortson Road Bridge was supposed to be completed a year ago. And so we're still waiting on that as a target date of November completion. So um, we will have Harris County Sheriff's Department support for traffic um, the first week of school. I've asked ABM to advertise and fill some additional traffic control positions uh, that we're going to need. Not only do we have DOT, but with all of the housing developments we have in Harris County, we're starting to see that traffic increase, especially the 315 cross corridor between Kala and um, the interstate or across Creekside. So many, so much of that traffic in the morning is people just trying to get to work, not even dropping the kids off. Same thing with the housing developments over by Pine Ridge. Uh, that 315 corridor going out to, um, is that 85? Yes. 85 Manchester. So there's a lot of traffic there. So I'm trying to bolster the traffic control that we're going to have at each school. Um, they have not filled those positions yet. Um, so uh, good news, we have two new bond buses that we qualified for. So um, Cheryl has Cheryl has contact with those, and they're standing by, and we're ready to order those. And we've got our contribution set aside already in the in the budgeting process. To um, get those buses. Okay. Okay. Yes, no, yeah, they'll be full size Bluebird buses. That's my question. Yes. Question. yes. Yes. Any, any, oh, another good thing is because we may expect some delays um, with um, buses due to traffic, and also one of my greatest concerns is the bus drivers um, with COVID 19. Um, COVID 19 can very easily. And quickly take care of, um, you know, just through contact and exposure, even if they're not sick, if they have to go on a quarantine, could um, present some problems for us. Um, kind of give you a, a, a bus driver status. Um, we've had five full time drivers and two sub drivers resign, so a total of seven. We've got four new hires in the pipeline right now. Um, absent for the next, for up to 10 days or more already. Uh, for regular sick leave or exposure, we've got um, six six full time drivers and three subs. So right now, for the first week of school, we've got just enough drivers before we have to get into our auxiliary drivers for the first week of school. Um, Cheryl Johnson had a great idea today. It was a stroke of genius. Uh, we talked to Miss Carlisle and I talked to Mr. Couch, and I asked if this was underhanded, but. Cheryl said since um, Muskogee County drivers are not going to be driving for a few weeks, and we invite some of them to come join us. So we contacted them and they said, sure. They're still getting paid by Muskogee County, so they could make a little extra money like them. So they would serve a substitute for us. So they will serve as some drivers for us. And, and um, we've already contacted and confirmed to two of them who will be here tomorrow um, to fill out the applications. And they have all the training. They've, they've got all of the training. training. They've got all of the training that our bus drivers have. We'll confirm. We'll have to confirm all of the drug testing, um, all of their certifications, um, their physicals, um, background check. We'll, we will do that as, a, as, as we hire a normal. As we hire a normal right. The only thing we don't have to do is train them. Uh, but what we will do, just because they're outside of our system and outside of our procedures, uh, for the first two days, um, Dover, Mike Dover will ride with those drivers um, to ensure that they know where they're going, what they're doing, and doing it to our standard. We'll put masks on the bus for children that they're not having masks. Yes, we will have a few masks on the bus for students who um, might get on the bus without one. So it will be required to wear a mask. It is required to wear a mask on the bus, both the driver and uh, the children as well. Yes. Any questions about, oh, my bus status website. Because I was getting to this, because we may have some delays, if, for instance, if we didn't have enough drivers, God forbid the first, you know, the first time that happens, um, and we had to run a double route where we drop kids off and then send that driver back to get another route, you know, they could be delayed up to an hour or two actually. So we've got a bus status website now on the school district website, right there on the school district website, you'll see bus status up at the top. So if a parent is there 
and they don't know where their bus is, they can click on that website and um, they, we will have a list daily of any of the buses that are running late. So all they have to know is their bus number and they can check that and see how late it's running and when it might be there. There's also a phone number. We've got a new, we, we uh, got another cell phone and it's dedicated just to this website and it's just for bus status. So when the parents um, call that bus, that phone number, they're only going to get it. It's only for the bus status. It's not for anything else. It's just to give them an updated status. So that went that went um, that went uh, full out to that. And that's real time. Morning and afternoon. Yes, sir. That's real time. Uh, any other question? Do we have a number of how many students are going to be riding versus how many students are going to be driven to school? I can get you a number of how many bus assignments we have how many kids are actually going to get on the bus is a different question um, that remains to be seen the first weeks of, the first few days of school especially the first week we always have low ridership especially at the elementary level um, so we're going to know more after that first week i know how i'll know how many of us we have assigned but how many actually ride the bus i don't know um, after two weeks after 10 days of not riding the bus consecutively being on that bus for 10 consecutive days, we take them off. Is that so we can re, you know, reallocate and readjust our routes if we need to? Dr. Finney. Yes, ma'am. If, if you signed up to go virtual, but you still received one of your bus assignment cards, do you need to call in and say something? No, ma'am. We're not assigning any virtual students um, bus assignments. So if they got that card in the mail, they should just disregard it? Yes, they should. <laughs> so this is, if we do find that we have more parents dropping kids off the base, that's going to affect our bus routes and the times that they should expect that bus to get there. Yes. So once we know, you know, the first 10 days, once we know you know what our patterns are going to be. Are we going to let people know? Yes, that, we, hey, we need to adjust. Yes, that's a normal practice that we that we use. We update those times and then let those parents know um, that that time has been adjusted. Okay. Also, um, given the special circumstances that we're in now, you know we're expecting uh, fewer riders, and so if we have fewer riders in on you know, two buses possibly, we can consolidate routes. We're, we're always looking at that too. Um, we want to social distance, but also our concern is making sure we have enough drivers every day to put on the road as well. So we're going to be looking at that daily and um, adjusting those as we, as we need to. Okay. Yes, sir. I assume that we have dedicated stop, not stop in every house, right? Yes, we have dedicated stops. Um, and in most situations, we're, we're uh, trying to be within the uh, Georgia Department of Education guidelines of, you know, the proper distance from houses and, and things like that. Um, the only time we stop uh, away from a designated stop and within the regulated distance of DOE is if, uh, if, the, if the stop of that house that would be at that proper distance is not safe, not safe stop. Yeah, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, I know there's a new old route over at the park. Um, yes. Yes. Well, um, um, before you answer that, I didn't know the local. Can you tell us what that is? Yes, over, over at park. Um, one thing we had problems with last year was the backing up the track on Highway 27. I mean, coming over that hill uh, by the church, we wanted to get those people off of that. And so when they would come in and go back around the gym and pull it out, people will try to turn left there. Well, if traffic's heavy, you can't turn left right down there. If you turn right, you just go with the flow of traffic. Back when that was a parks and recreation facility, there's an old gravel road that goes down behind the um, playground. Um, so what we did is we improved that with some additional gravel um, this year. And so they'll be able to come in off 27 go around the school, drop their kids off, and then they'll exit out that back, go down that gravel road behind the playground, come up, 
and they will turn right and exit out by lot two and come up by the um, by the PLC. So we won't have cars coming back out um, off of Highway 27 for park in the morning drop off. So, and I've looked at it, I think it's pretty good. I still have a concern about they coming back out and we're rerouting them out by the, the PLC and EOC and they have to go left or right with buses. And then when the middle school is open, we're routing them back around to the Carver Circle into that route where all the buses this are. Is a, this, is, <laughs> this is really a quick fix right now. But I'm yeah, saying, this yeah. is really a quick fix right now. Um, so that we can uh, make sure we're being safe right there. Yeah. And coming off, you know, all right. looking, looking down the road a ways, there, there may be ways we need to modify that entrance um, with another lane or so, so that people can sit there and turn left, um, but can continue to go right as well. Any other questions? Okay, technology. Um, I'm sorry. I thought I thought the technology or the humble handbook was in your packet. I can send that to you uh, for you to review. Um, the Chromebook handbook and the use agreement was sent to parents, and we are underway with issuing the Chromebooks to virtual students. We issued Tuesday night uh, successful uh, issuing. Um, Tuesday night, it was very deliberate and um, we accounted for everything very well. And we were making sure that the people that were supposed to get the Chromebooks got the Chromebooks. And uh, I haven't heard any uh, update on the status for tonight, but I'm sure we had a lot less, uh, a lot fewer people this uh, tonight than we did on Tuesday. But that went very well. Um, we'll now turn our attention um, to issuing the Chromebooks at school. Um, as the kids get in, um, ensuring that those parents have uh, agreed to that uh, uh, protocol in the uh, handbook uh, and that they are actually residents of Harris County. That was one of the big things we that was one of the big things we made um, kind of non-negotiable is you had to have completed your OLR before you were issued a Chromebook. Um, we decided to do that because of all of the questions we were getting from homeschool parents um, and so forth. So we didn't want somebody slipping into our line or going online, filling up the form, slipping in the line and, and getting a Chromebook. So uh, the two things they had to have done was uh, complete the agreement, have completed their OLR, and then they had to show up with photo ID uh, to do that. Uh, How do we do it for security? Are they having to pay a technology target? Or um, well, we we have secured um, those, and from most of the people that are have been issued a combo, they're wanting to pay the twenty dollar um, insurance. So we've collected quite a bit of money um, for the insurance. It was option, yes. It was recommended, but it was uh, but it was option. And most of the option is if you don't pay the insurance fee. And it's damaged or lost or something, you know, negligent. Yes. You just pay for the printer all the time. Yes, you have to replace, you have to pay for the cost of the repair or full replacement if it was warranted. And that was explained. Yes, that's all. Yeah. Okay. That was explained very yes. well. Yes. You didn't fluff it. You did you were, they spelled it out. I agree. <laughs> If this, then this. Yes. And to replace this keyboard is $75. And to replace this, this one. And then they spelled out the prices. If you don't pay this $20 and any of this tears up, this is your bill. Right. And it was great. Good right. job. So, how are you going to ensure that that happens? Well, we're going to, um, we're going to um, use every means of leverage we can uh, schedules. Um, registration, um, all those, all those kind of things. Just like you know, we equate it, we equate it kind of to a textbook. Um, then, if a textbook is damaged, you would have to. Uh, That's a lot more expensive than a textbook. Yeah. What we've got is most of most of the parents. Um, I would say ninety percent of them are being issued a thing. 
then it was easy on the um, on the app. The yes, and, and, and yeah. we are we are paying through my school bus. We set up a, a store through my school bus where they can purchase that. And most people are purchasing it online. Okay. 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 Um, we also, in technology, have issued 300 webcams. Uh, the writer does that uh, across the school because as, as um, teachers come back into the classrooms, even though they're in the classrooms, they can't meet together in their academic teams, or the principal can't have a can't have a faculty meeting in the media center where we're all sitting together in the media center. So we saw a need that they needed webcams, and so we um, fitted most of the classrooms with uh, webcams so they can do those meetings, even though they're in the same building. Any questions on technology? Okay, two more items, real quick: safety and security. Um, You'll see in your action agenda the SRO contract. Um, I'm working with uh, Chief Walden to get the proper dates put on there. He put 2020 on there. So I'm asking him to uh, send me a revised copy of that with the proper date. And one thing we've emphasized to the schools is in the midst of preparing for all of the COVID 19 and the pandemic challenges that we have to have, not to lose focus on our safety and security of uh, our normal. Um, safety and security plans and um, drills, processes, and those things. So all of the SROs, I spoke to all of the SROs this week, and um, Mountain Hill has replaced theirs with a full-time SRO, um, Officer Lauren Brown, and so we're ready to go there. Um, yes, sir? A couple of questions. <clears throat> the, uh, the agreement, if uh, I look at it right, I'm trying to find the number now to tell you. Uh, the right hour raised the same one last year. Yes, sir. Are there any edits or changes to the contract this year? Yes, sir. The agreement that we did last year, yes, the same number of SROs. Yes, sir. Um, and the cost the same. The price is the same. This is for one year agreement? Yes, sir. This is the school term. And then finally, um, uh, what about the, um, the SROs? Obviously, they are. They're they're not important, but they do manage them. Yes. Uh, I'm assuming the COVID 19 requirements, I say the process are in line with this. You explain what we're requiring of them, what you're talking about. What are those requirements land and what can we're, we are We're requiring them the same requirements as we have at our employees. Since, since they don't work with the ship, well, I'm going to have to get clarification on that for the debt that needs to rotate for the high school. Okay. But we, um, they, they will fall under our same protocols first and foremost. So we have a, a new SRO at the Mount Hill, is that correct? Yes, Officer Lauren Brown. And they put in touch with um, Mr. Gilbert. It may be, it may not be, but since we're having the dates edited anyway, it may be something that you want to consider in the agreement uh, as they follow safety protocol, unfortunately. And maybe in there, I'm not sure. So you got it. And then finally, on the construction update, just to update you on the sewer issue that we had at Harris County Carver Middle School, I attended the um, uh, Hamilton City Council meeting uh, earlier in July, for their July meeting. And uh, the City Council voted to approve that they would share the cost on that with us. Um, and by doing so, uh, they would do it on a schedule of uh, once the school is built and open, they would rebate us the basic uh, sewer fee that we would have of $1,100, $1,150 per month uh, for the 15 years of the term of our uh, payment at the school, um, which would come out to be about half of what we're estimating that cost would be. I think it comes out to like $207,000. Um, on their part, we make this. My first thing is a good compromise. Yes, sir. I thought so. Carrying that water. <clears throat> um, that was, of course, too bad to hear any comments or questions from the rest of the team. Uh, but you know, they, they voted to, to that agreement. I assume we'll also have to have a vote on the agenda to, to keep that same. Yes, what I would like to do, and I'm trying to get, is a, another interagency agreement from them that you guys can take action on. 
um, in agreement with that. I don't want to rely just on a, a city council vote and approval in the board meeting. So we'll, I'm working to get that interagency agreement so that we can take action and do that as well. A question to Helen on that um, negotiation. Good news, we are in the process of making our first capitalized interest payment uh, for the construction loans. And if you remember when we closed on that loan, that capitalized interest of $480,000 was set aside in the account. Well, that has come due this month. And um, we're in the process of getting that process paid. Uh, so making progress, making progress. Uh, Harris County Carver Middle School, uh, I'll be sending out shortly, these, these will speak better to it than I do, I'll send out the um, pictures from our last meeting we had yesterday, and um, A wing where the cafeteria is, and B wing where the uh, offices and the media center are going to be, and that floor is poured, um, and they're going to start pouring down the big wall, concrete slab, and then you've seen the, the um, Panama Canal that has been dug down there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yes. and, and the mountain of dirt that's there. So they're, they're, they're getting the sewer lines run in there too. Creekside now has walls and a, and a roof. Yes. And so the shell the shells in, they've almost got Creekside dried in. So once they get it, once they get the dry shell on Creekside, it's really going to take off. Uh, if you go through the parking lot uh, between Mulberry Creek and Creekside, if you just keep going around the back of Creekside and get around the gym, it's right there. It's right there. And it's fully assessed, accessible, so, so you don't have to worry about disrupting any construction. And our last thing question for both, but I assume we are on track with our timeline for both. <laughs> I was telling uh, both. Uh, construction managers, when I went to the meetings, I said, I, I love you guys. These two construction projects are the highlight of my life right now. Mm -hmm. um, they're going very well, and I love going over those construction sites because it is a distraction sometimes from some of the other things. <laughs> so I tell them, I tell them, you guys are the bright spot in my life right now. So they are doing a great job. Then we'll, um, we will appreciate the Creekside should be uh, available to use uh, when we come back from Christmas, January of 2021. So I'm subject to any but go ahead, sir. I have one question regarding the buses. I know we had two that we're going to get through the bus on. Are we looking to purchase any on our side? No, sir. Yeah, question. Okay. I will ask questions. Um, from the Panama Canal that's being dug over yes, the middle school, does that also for, because I wrote about that this afternoon, is that also what they're digging up close to where the baseball field Yes, and they're working on the baseball field right now to get that completed before Tuesday um, when they're going to have their first you know, softball. 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 Okay. So we're still going to have a little bit going on there, but they're trying to get that part done and work back uh, across to that parking lot so that they can have as little stuff there on that side as possible. What about the uh, the stadium renovations going on for softball? We okay. have stadium renovations for softball. We've got the concrete court. Um, we did have we we got all the money raised. We got the concrete court. Um, that concrete had the conduit for the electrical wires to come up through. So if you go over there, you'll see that electrical stub coming up out of the concrete, and they'll be installing the bleachers in the press box in September. And that's all, it's all prefab, right? It's all prefab. So they're going to move in the bleachers on the sides, and those are still portable. And then it's all prefab, the press box, um, and the bleachers uh, that the press box will sell. Yep. I, I had a question about the football stadium and our preparations for home games, things like that. And I know Bryce Robinson and Mr. Couch and yourself are all working on that diligently. Is there a plan to bring in extra bleachers or something like that to the stadium? Or what is our what are our options there? We're actually going to be meeting with Bryce tomorrow morning um, over at the high school to um, discuss some of those options along with the recommendations of the High School Athletic Association. Um, there's, there's several different options that they talked about. 
uh, as far as you know additional seating or um, limit the seating capacity of the game. We also have purchased a streaming service um, that we can stream those those games live, and we're hoping that will help a lot too. So we'll have that streaming service that we can we can use to. Part of it's going to be determined by the executive orders that come down. Because he has one, I think, that expires, obviously, too, for the large crowds. So we'll have to see what happens. We have questions or comments for the topic? Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> that will then bring us to item D5. That the Harris County Board of Education discuss the upcoming GSBA whole board training. Uh, you may recall we discussed this last month. Uh, GSBA is offering uh, free home board training, uh, line out virtual training. But we're required to have three hours. Um, Mr. Council provided for us a handout. Do you want to speak to this? Uh, this? These are some of the uh, topics that are covered by Frank King and his team to the Hungry Committee with him. He's one of the ones who first had this with the issue. Um, in, in the interest of brevity, in fact, as we've all worked together for a long time, and I kind of know where we are, you do too. My recommendation would be that we, as a, you as a board and we as a school system, consider uh, strategic planning mm -hmm. because that's where we are. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of things going on, and, and obviously, we're just going to work really hard to plan for what we're going to do next week. But what we're going to do next year is incumbent upon how we're heading that we're heading down that road with the people. So I'd like to suggest that we do that try to work out those three dates. Did we hear any of the dates that we had? Yes, we sent him the one job to give us and they want to know what topics we're going to do and we'll work on that. So yes, yes, yeah, yeah, just yeah, respond to his plan bill. Actually, as Mr. King, uh, Mr. King responded at all with a little bit for any of those things, like all the way, none of them. I know he's going to be spot up on me too, because um, no, he hasn't responded to the dates yet. I think he was waiting for the topic so then he could put his team together, whoever he's going to assign to do the training. I'm sure she'll work on it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so he's he going to know the topic is so we can assign the life question there with that. Understood. That's okay with me. That's what we're saying. No, I think that's a great idea. Great idea. Yeah. 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 Now, I'll ask about the scores that we have. And you can, I guess we'll do some of that work as well. Uh, yes. And they, their presentation may be worth the I think they All right. Uh, that will then bring us to item P1 at the Harris County Board of Education Review for approval the attached policy revision request to board policy GARH employees and absence leaves and absences, which has been tabled for the prior amount of time. You may recall that uh, we were presented this issue uh, in July at the committee meeting that the item has been on the table for the required amount of time, so we can take action on that. Uh, tonight, I'll let it be a motion to be accepted. We'll be just that possible. We'll be there. Second. Ms. Oliver? Any discussion? All in favor of following by showing of hands, say yay. Yay. Yeah. <coughs> Any opposed? Nay. And the motion carries. That, of course, then brings us to item E2 that the Harris County Board of Education Review for approval the attached Georgia DOE FY22. Capital outlay application uh, document. Mr. Cotton, would you like to speak to that? You had a question, Dr. Bean, how to answer. Dr. Bean, how to answer. Yes, sir. <laughs> Do I need to come up to the podium? Yes, yeah, so we can. Uh, okay. So, Dr. Sparks can hear you. So, this is the FY22 capital outlay application, and the, the, the projects that we have applied for is the air conditioner renovation. At the high school, which would replace all of the air conditioners at the high school because they are they are due. Um, the air conditioners at the high school, most of them are R22 units, and so R22 we don't get anymore. So uh, we've got stockpiled R22 from some units that we have taken out of commission. We pull all that free on out that refrigerant out and we stockpile it. Um, so 
we need to do that. So on the Harris County High School facility, we're looking to replace a model with air conditioners uh, and a dishwasher. Um, you can go through all of these costs, but the same as building a building, um, you have the state eligible cost and you have the um, local funds that have to accompany that. These are only estimates that the architects have done based on the project. Um, rarely, rarely do the estimates match with what the actual contract will be. So to give you an idea, if you look here, um, I, I just look at the modification summaries here. So on the modification summaries, uh, for the total modification for the Harris County High School facility, we would, we would get from the state $1.6 million, basically. And then we would add $2 million of local funds to that for a total estimated architect cost of $3.6 million. Um, of course, we'll do, the, um, we'll do the bid process, either construction manager of this or uh, sealed bids. And um, we, we think it'll be a lot less than that. But this is just the application so that they will allot the money in the FY22 budget to sell the bonds to provide the money for these projects. So much like we uh, had an estimated price of about 31 million on the middle school, when the contract was all said and done, it was, you know, a lot less than that. So just for clarity, um, uh, this, this is based on our annual submission uh, for our capital outlay funds that we are already qualified for. Yes, we already qualified. But um, so what we have to request in this application for next year. Yes. Right, because there's a timeline for something. So, so we request it, they then approve it. Okay. Yes. Uh, and and authorize whatever that number would be because we already uh, have qualified for that. And then we prepare for our portion for these plots for FY22. Yes. Okay. So yes. Time yes, sir. Now, what is the timeline for this application approval? Is that, uh, are we nearing the end of that? Is that my, uh, I have to have, on I have to have this. Um, turned in by the end of August. Okay. So if you can take action on it at the next meeting, okay. we'll get everything wrapped up in uh, session. Okay, so, so we can uh, then take this for you. Yes. Uh, field questions and then yes, we'll sir. the next Thursday. Yes, sir. Uh, any additional questions you may want to point? Will I get a yeah, copy uh, of that email? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Dr. Sparks, what was your question? Was that included in the package that I received? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. The other project we had is at Park Elementary just because of the age of the building. And we would be replacing uh, if we need to. We're going to go ahead and apply for money so it is allotted. And if we need to, we've got three years to use this money um, once it's approved. If we decide not to use it, it goes back into the state. Uh, it goes back into our allotment. But due to the age of Park's roof and some of the issues we've had, um, with those roofs before. Um, we are looking at replacing, if needed, the standing seam metal roofs on that, that building. I think, I, I think I recall um, Dr. Pinyas talking about that. What we did is a, um, a long-term repair. Yes. Uh, very effective repair. Yes. But we, we knew at that point that somewhere down the road we were going to require a Yes, the TPO roof um, on that long hallway and the um, Cafeteria, those and, and down on the um, the transitions between the hallways, we um, took care of those in that last roof repair we did. But for the standing seam roof, as part of that, we also went in and did some patchwork jobs. Um, you know, patching up the seams and patching up the, the the rivets where they go through the metal and things like that. And so we thought it's time, given the age of that building, to at least. Have this on standby if we need it. We'll, uh, we'll be using it for some time to come. Yes. Um, that kitchen over there also needs a complete kitchen renovation, or not kitchen renovation, but freezer, cooler freezer renovation um, that we will have to do on that. So we those, that, um, that makes up the uh, contents of the application. Is there a question or comment? Very well, thank you, sir. Thank you. Might as well stay up here in case we request on this one. Okay. Um, yes, so thank you, Scott. That does bring us to IV3. At the Harris County Board of Education, we keep on Google 
protect uh, the security resource officer contract in the Harris County Sheriff's Department for the FY 2020 2021 school year. We had some conversation about that a few moments ago. Uh, any other questions or comments regarding this on the contract? Next week, it's fine. Yes, sir. Okay. Right. Sure. So that then will bring us to item P4. But the Harris County Board of Education Review for approval to attach a list of 20 additional tutors. That list, uh, the name is of the review is included, of course, in your, in your package. We can review that and take action on that. Uh, I do have a question about this, Mr. Um, you know, Standardly, traditionally, we have two uh, tutors that are often for in classroom or after school, whatever the tutors may be. Uh, is there a hybrid this year? Or are we doing virtual tutors or both virtual tutors? They will be doing virtual tutors. I think time will tell on that. We're going to get it approved by Trump here. Uh, I've been talking with some of our guys and reading tutors about what it may look like for them doing that tutoring online for yeah. students. Uh, we'll definitely have in school tutoring still going on with one of our, our teachers. Just we don't we don't really know what you have at this point until it's too early. Okay. Well, this is also the other few years in the summer also. Yes. Any other questions or comments? All right, that will then bring us to item P5 of the Harris County Board of Education Review for approval to attach the list of FY21 21 extended day tutor. Uh, this too is uh, an annual review of the list uh, of assignments. Um, there's the question we had a few moments ago. Uh, the only thing that seems to count, I should say, the only thing is one of the significant differences here, which you've got to please keep me honest, but this is paid for out of federal funds, right? Not yeah. Yeah. Well, the others are uh, local funds, is that correct? Well, the, the 20 day fund comes from the state. 20 day, okay. But this is federal. Any comments or questions? Thanks for that. Very good. That will then bring us to item F1 of the Harris County Board of Education review the attached major purchases report for the month of July, which is That is in your package. I'll give you a moment to finish that. Okay. We will take action next week. If you have any questions, um, can you sure get those to me, Mr. Council? I'm sure he's glad to share us. All right. I want to go ahead, yes. So, I'm going to line the thermometer and stuff like that. Does that fall under these block dollars? I mean, or does that just come out of local funds under the circumstances they day? Um, it, 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 it was kind of a mixture. Some of some of the stuff we were able to purchase with um, FY20 funds um, before the end of the year, and I think the thermometers were actually were actually part of that. Okay. okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Uh, that will bring us to item F2. The Harris County Board of Education review the tax financial report from June 2020. Mr. Kaiser, would you like to do that? Uh, the only thing you may have noticed or, or may not have read Kevin's email is um, we have the general fund equity in the balance of seven million two hundred nine thousand. Uh, be aware that we are still going to be finishing with. Rebates on grants, different things are going to take place, and we expect that to go up. Uh, Kelly's projected it will be over eight and a half feet. Um, so I think that's pretty really good. Also, you notice um, that the total you see is 92.3% of the budget. That's good. I think that's 9% of the year. Is, you know, the good side of that is we save some money, the bad side of that is we save money because we weren't so. Uh, but uh, a lot of things have been done, and, and Dr. King has been really good, and, and they also consolidate what money we do have as much as possible. On preparation for what we're going to do this school year, 
for what you did, but do you have any idea, estimate on how much reimbursements you're expecting? Not yet. We just, this is what August uh, 6th, so we just closed out July 31st, so we won't get any of that for those numbers, probably for another week and a half. Thank you. That was mine. <laughs> Other comments or questions? Uh, Mr. Baker, thank you. Please express uh, our gratitude to all our I want to reiterate that you did a really, really good job. Yes, yes. Thank you, Ms. Schroeder, and your whole team. That was great. And transportation. And transportation. And transportation. Yes. <laughs> In fact, I think Ms. Schroeder is joining us, so we'll tell you to be ready to thank you. Please pass along to your team our gratitude for their uh, management of uh, that this past year, and we will continue. Thank you, Ms. Schroeder. That will then bring us to item F4, the Harris County Board of Education will be the attached to this. Quarterly reports received from all schools for the last quarter of FY20. Uh, those reports, of course, are in your package. I'm prepared to take a look at those. Any comments or Any additional comments or questions? 
take a look at the course. If you have questions, I'm sure you have some questions. To answer those, I'll be happy to take a look at the way to report it. We don't have to take action on those things. Uh, then that will take us to item G, the Parish County Board of Education. Share comments, use the information they might have in the public and other members of the board. And this evening, I'm going to start uh, first with Dr. Sparks. Dr. Sparks? I don't have anything. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ray. Um, I'd just like to say uh, great job to Mr. Dunn and his staff at the high school for managing to get some closure to some of those seniors that were able to walk at graduation. It was it was a well received event and I see nothing but good comments and thanking the system for being able to get something to honor those seniors and their accomplishments. So uh, thank you, Mr. Dunn and, and his staff for, for putting that together and, and Mr. Couch and Bryce Robinson and everybody that had a hand in it, you know, great job. It, it, it went off flawlessly and it was great. Uh, and it was actually good to, to actually be back on the football field at, at Harris County High School, Tiger Stadium, and, and do graduation. It's been a while since we've done that. Um, also, just wanted to pass along my condolences. We found out at graduation about the passing of our longtime uh, attorney, Mr. Taylor. Um, it, it was a, a blow to all of us. We knew that, that he'd been ill and uh, but it was a, a sad day to hear of his passing and, and our thoughts and prayers continue to go out to his family and, and uh, the community because that's a, that's a pillar that, that we've lost and a source of, of great knowledge that uh, we've been robbed of. So again, my condolences to, to his family and uh, looking forward to uh, getting kicked off on Monday. Um, you know, we, we are giving the parents of Paris County what they wanted. We are giving them an opportunity to come to school and let their kids get in-person education. And for the ones that wanted to keep their, their children at home, that was the best decision for them. You know, we're going to support them as well. So I think Dr. Denny and, and his team have put together a great plan. And I thank you for all of your hard work that you put in. Uh, anyone that's had a hand in getting any of that done, it's, it's been awesome. And I know it's been tireless, <laughs> but I appreciate that. That's all I have. That's great. Uh, I'd like to echo what Mr. Ray said. I mean, I thought the graduation, I mean, I thought it was very well executed, the way it was laid out. And I mean, I thought, you know, again, I mean, it was a good day. I'm glad we were able to have that. Give, give those kids an opportunity to actually walk across the field and get the performance. So I thought it was really well. Um, also, I'd like to echo the fact that, um, of course, Mr. John Doe is going to be very, very missed in this community. I mean, he, like, like Mr. Ray said, wealth of knowledge. I mean, just like you said, a, a pillar and a statement of this community, not just the school board, but the county commission and everything that he's done for this community for so long. And I hate to hate that his retirement, get in, get that joy of retirement. It was really a sad day on top of a good day during graduation, you know, learning about his passing. Um, again, I mean, thank you to the entire staff getting ready for the school year. I mean, I know we would not make everybody happy all the time. I mean, it's just, you know, you try to do the best you can with what you have and just roll with it and um, make the best out of it. And I think that's what we got a good plan to do that. Um, and, you know, let's just keep our fingers crossed and say our prayers and it goes off another hitch. I mean, I, I think it's a good plan. So thank y'all. And then I always want to give her kudos because more conversion the emails I get from Major Crumbly. I mean, that lady, I mean, um, I know y'all probably fill up two of that stuff down and she just gets it out to the community. So I know I'm glad that she is a part of this team and gets all that information out to the black people and the media and the Facebook and everything else that she has a hand on because I know it takes a lot of effort for her to get this stuff done. I don't think I could add anything more to what you have to say. I thought it was a good thing, John's family, and then uh, appreciate the staff or everything they've done to get back to the school. That's all. I just wanted to say, uh, Mr. Ray, 
thank you to Ms. Walsworth and Ms. Bridges and Ms. Smith. The graduation was um, incredible. It was a wonderful experience. We didn't really know how it was all going to work, and it was fantastic. It was great. And so thank you for all the work that went into that. It was great to hear Ms. Jackson one last time, reading all the names, and uh, to be a part of that on the field was super special. So thank you. Um, just wanted to congratulate all of you guys. I've been reading everything that's been coming out, everything. You guys are doing an incredible job of communication. Yes. I've received emails, texts, texts reminding me to read my emails. It's like, please read it again. <laughs> So I appreciate that. And um, you guys, as something said earlier, we've been living with these documents and these this um, for so long. Uh, you're not always mindful that it's new for some that the procedures and things. And I really congratulate you on making it as simple as as you have. It's really nice to read what you're putting out and to understand. To be a parent that's coming into this and hearing other parents and students talk, you're really doing a great job laying it out. They are so excited about Monday. They are. They're nervous. They're terrified. And they're, they're nervous every year. But this year it's going to be unique. I love, love, love that we are living in a time when things are so, um, things are going to be different. Things are going to be, it doesn't mean it's necessarily bad. And our, our attitudes. The way that you conduct yourself and your passion and everything is contagious. So if we're excited, the kids are going to be excited. If we're negative, the kids are going to be negative. I mean, uh, whether your attitude is good or bad, it's contagious either way. So I just want to encourage this all to keep in mind that the kids are watching us, the parents are watching us. And if we find the good, don't just look for the good, find the good. In every bet, in every situation, you're like, well, that's different, or well, that was really uncomfortable, or well, we're not, you know, doing exactly the job that I was hired to do, or that sort of thing. But I'm telling you, it's going to work out. This is a small season in our lives. It's not going to last forever. It's, anyway, I'm, I'm through. I just wanted to encourage you. And I say that because I went to the FFA award banquet last week and on the football field. And it was so cool. We had the awards banquet. We had him over second night to all social distance. The football team seniors came in with their moms and had their yearbook pictures made. And then the band was coming in to have their awards banquet. And I love how everyone was being mindful of everyone else. And they were they were being they were staying in their families, they were staying apart, but it was so good to see each other. And get to be together. So I think it's, it's going to be different, but it's not necessarily bad. So, um, I guess I would say, middle of the weather is like yesterday. We really try out very, very hard to come up with a good plan with the school we were going. And it's helped to try it because everything works out. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I agree with y'all. I saw that I had to say you came a lot of and it was really, really good to be on the field. And we're going to look at that. There might be a possibility that uh, we can get that done and you kind of make a say out there. Personally, I don't like to see this. I like to see it. It's but I have to play with the So we'll see. I thought what you've done and, and encourage him along with the staff to come to you. One other thing I, I do remiss to say, because I know y'all know that John Hunter was a class. I mean, he was just a class at Southern Gentleman Hall. And I'll always remember some of the quotes I've learned from him over the years. Most of them are hilarious. Nobody has seen him. Some of y'all will remember him. He's going to be some of them. But uh, we're going to do something to, to memorialize John. I really want to be remembered here. I want to be remembered in the system. I really want to be remembered in here. But I was uh, sitting right over there. It's what I always think about this time. So we'll be we'll get through that. One other thing I want to add um, our director of development, Lord Marlowe, did a really, really, really good job. That was nice. And he went to the 10th district and they voted 5 to 0 to use the 
old library to set up uh, Mercy Manning. And he just does a fantastic job bringing all those different groups together to get things done and approved. It's a long process, it took about a year. Uh, but he did a great job with it, and we're really excited about what's going to be about kids. What's going to be the medicine in here? Yes, absolutely. We don't really have a lot. Of so, well, I was just really thankful to be here. I don't know. I got to be like three, two. No, we're lucky to be here. We're lucky to have y'all. I appreciate it. I know that's true. Yeah, they're worn out. Huh? You know, even though Daisy's a little grouchy once in a while, I'm not really there. It never passes. <laughs> Listen, I, I can't add anything that's been said by the power tribe. Uh, I do want to say um, thanks for all of the hard work and efforts being done at every uh, level in this district to um, be sure that school starts uh, safely. Smoothly, uh, it's been a, a lot of work going on, and uh, we're very, very, very grateful. I will say welcome to the uh, new teachers uh, that are starting this, this week. Uh, what an interesting way to start a new career! Uh, well, welcome. We are sorry that we did not get these in person, but we will we will have that opportunity at some point uh, in the course of the year, hopefully. But we do uh, we do welcome. Um, I do want to say thank you to uh, high schools for the graduation uh, ceremony. It was a phenomenal event. It was very well organized, very well executed. Um, it was very well done. So thank you uh, for all that effort. And uh, thank you to the students and parents who participated. Uh, couldn't have a graduation ceremony without them. So thank you for them to come. And, and Mr. Couch also wanted to mention about the Mercer uh, Medicine. What a significant um, uh, event um, and prospect to have uh, Mercer School of Medicine uh, entertaining uh, a relationship to come into Harrison County. Uh, as we've talked about before here, this entire group gets it. Um, it will mean so much to the citizens, uh, to our school district, to our students. Uh, so uh, thank you uh, to Mr. Lalo and his team that are working diligently uh, to make that happen. And we appreciate the support of the commissioners uh, as well. Um, finally, I want to remind the public uh, that we do have uh, one final public hearing for our military, which is next Thursday night at 6 o'clock. Um, and it will be virtual as well as uh, in person here at uh, Central Office. And so that will be the third and final military public hearing, and then we will take action on the military. That's so so with that said, I will entertain a motion that we enter into executive session to discuss or deliberate on the appointment, employment, compensation, hiring, disciplinary action, or dismissal, a periodic evaluation or rating of a public officer or employee or to interview applicants for the position of superintendent. Good enough second, Mr. Parker. All those in favor, show my raise your hand say yay. Yay. Thank you, Dr. Sparks. Can we go today? We will enter executive session. Thank you for participating. Are we going to a breakout room?
coming down the floor. Dave Denny, we're finished. You're Arlene Doyle. Shane, you're Arlene Doyle. That's fabulous. Hello, Arlene. <laughs> Is Arlene Doyle somebody that works for Harris County? Is that her computer? Are you on her? Oh, that's fun. Oh. <laughs> yes. Change my name, change my name. Yay. Any opposed, nay? 